Hello everybody, this is Dave here. Boy, it's been a while since I made a video. Um, yeah, I've just been busy and, you know, going on with life, I guess. Um, I thought I'd make another video with Pydex on here because that's probably the number one software everybody has to use to either, you know, put new birds in their clock or upload like a, a, a race, you know, into eWind speed. Um, or just do a lot of changes at all you know you need pydex to do everything from communicating with your clock regardless of which style you have an Addis, a g1 or m1 you know you know into the software of ewin speed to upload data and stuff from there so um everybody you know should um you know get the copy of pydex and put it on either your desktop or that's what i usually do um, where I plug everything else into. I don't usually use a laptop because, um, but you can. I mean, I'm just saying, I just, my personal preference is I usually use a desktop to hook everything up to. So I'm on a laptop now because I do put copies of Pydex on numerous computers just to make sure if something goes wrong with one, I have a backup. So this is um, Pydex down here. I'm on version 2.7.08. And, um, you can get that at benzing.cc. It's it's a German site, I believe. That's why it doesn't have .com after it, you know. So if you go there, you have to kind of search around. It's under software and to find the software that you need to download. So, um, but for further ado, let's open up Pydex here and we'll see, kind of walk you around in here. When you first come into Pydex, you know, it, it'll come up here. Uh, tell you what version you're on and um, takes you to the main screen which shows your members you can have multiple clubs over here I only have one I'm, we're all part of the Montello Pigeon Club here in Wisconsin um, so you put your club over here on the left hand side and then all of the different flyers will be over here on the right side um, so if I click on this you'll see these are all the names of you know the flyers that are that are under the current club right now um, and if you move the bar across here you know you'll get all of their um, info you can put their address in there of their names when you go to add it which I can show you here so if I'm under here um, just follow along the bottom here this thing here is where you put a new club you click here and you could put all your data this in here where you would change information about your club and then this you'd hit this trash can here and it'll delete your whole club which i wouldn't recommend doing because it'll delete probably all your club and all your members too so you know these buttons down here are kind of over aggressive sometimes so you gotta really pay attention to what you're doing but if we wanted to add a flyer over here there's a little blue button and you'd hit it and it would pop up and everybody's going to have a fancier number so um if somebody was coming i just noticed this the other day from another club um, the reason I, how I got this one so I could import their birds into our club is I first, let me walk out of here, I went over here to data transfer and I plugged the clock in. You know, I ran it over, used the red badge to get in to um, communicate with the PC. Then I pressed this button down here and it loaded all their birds over on this side of, of the screen over here. Okay. And after they were over there, up on the top, I saw their fancier name and their clock information up here in, in the screen up here. And once I had that information, now this is like I said, I had a flyer come in. They wanted to join our club. And so all of their information was in the clock. Now I need to get that into Pydex to either edit it, change it, or um, you know do anything with it. So I had to get the data from the clock which is on this side after I press the green button I wrote it down on a sheet of paper their fancier number of their clock information and then I went back over here into the member screen and then I went to add it so now once I got their number you know what, what was in the clock over here I was able to you know put it in here you know then I could put their you know their name in their last name if they had a preference for their name of their clock like this guy had one that he wanted to call it like um, flyer attack you know I could put that in here 
then you can put all this other stuff in here, which is nice to have. You know, you can put their longitude, latitude, and all that, but it's not needed. I think the main thing is this stuff over here that's bold. And then you just click the save button here and you'll add it. So then, you know, they'll be added into here and um, they'll show up on this side. Then once they're in there, what I did is I went back to the data information. Be, you know, because I did that, I had to reread out the clock again, press the green badge. It was over here. Then when I came up over here and I went under the Pigeon Club, you know, his name was under here on the left-hand side. And I highlighted it. And, um, and, you know, so like when it was there, you know, all of his, um, in all of his thing was blank. There was no birds or anything there. Um, then what I had to do is to get it from the clock on this side into the computer base on this side, this arrow over here, these two will change. And then this bottom one is going from the clock to the database the top arrow goes from the database into the clock so um, I was able to first of all transfer his name um, um, you know into the database which actually I probably know that I'm thinking about it I don't think I had to do that because he just didn't have any birds there so I just came down below to the pigeon data and click the double arrows here and then all of the birds from his clock then went into the PC database so that's how I got all his birds, you know, into our database. So then I didn't have to unchip every bird, recreate them, have them put new chips on it. So um, that that worked out slick, you know. And like I said, I know some of the people out there that do this aren't really like computer guys, and I'm not really 100% computer guys, but I figure a lot of stuff out. And once you kind of understand how whoever developed this Pydex works. It kind of makes sense, but you just got to kind of take a step back every now and then and just kind of, you know, think about, you know, what you're doing and trying to do and and um, without messing stuff up. So anyway, that's how you over here on the members would create a new member. The registration, <coughs> excuse me, is a place in here where you can come in. So um, I don't usually, I do use this screen a lot, like when I'm creating like a whole bunch of birds. Um, like in young bird season when I get a list from the flyers like I'll come in here Let's just pick somebody out here um, This guy here and let's just say I know they're all AU birds and They're gonna be for this year, which would be you know 23 now see when I put that in Notice all the data underneath here just goes away. Okay um, because it's what I'm kind of doing is this top thing here is kind of like a search command and a criteria command, kind of like a query. So if I was doing that, let's just say that I thought all the birds that he had were all MRP. That's the name of our birds, Montello Racing Pigeon. Um, once you put this amount in up here, now you can leave it blank when you do it in there, but um, then you're going to be typing in more information. But let's say all of it, he had like 10 birds in there and they're all from, 23 and they're all from this club now if I click down here because I have to insert a new pigeon when it comes up First thing all I have to do is put in there. It's an AU bird and it's going to be a 23 bird And then the club will be you know MRP And then let's say his, his band number in here is um, 10 And it's a hen, and it's a it's like a blue bar. Okay, now I'm going to hit add. All right, now see that comes. Okay, that added that bird. Now I didn't add a chip to it yet, um, which I usually do that on another screen. Um, I'm sure some people would say you could do it here, which you can. If I go back and click on this, um, sorry, let me go in here. If I go click under, double click on that bird. Um, see, it doesn't allow me in here to, to add the chip, but it does down below here. This green thing says chip. So if I was to click that, the light would come on your, hopefully, you know, you got your, you need your club system clock plugged in when you're doing this. I didn't go through all of that, um, but that all has to be done, you know. Um, once you get ready, 
you know, to chip birds. And of course you need it plugged in to read out the clock too. So, um, but I'm making a long story short here. So let's go back to say, let's say I'm gonna add another bird. Now, if you notice here, when I click on add another bird, see how now it, it stayed over here as an AU23 MRP bird. And now I could put another <coughs> bird in there too. You know, if I'm gonna move this down. You know, let's say it's band number 11. <clears throat> and it'll stay at blue bar um, unless I change the color of the sex and I can hit add on that one. So now that's added. Um, and then you can go back in here now and then put another band number. No, if I was doing a whole bunch of them, you know, let's say I know he had bands 12 and they went all the way to, um, let's say, I don't want to do a lot of them because I'm going to have to go back in and delete it. Let's say they went to 20. Now, just remember this, when you do this and you put a sequence like this, they're all going to be hens and they're all going to be blue bars, you know, and then you'd have to edit each color. So that's kind of, it's a quick add way, but I mean, you're going to have to go back in unless you're sure they're all the same color and the same sex. So if I hit add now, see how they added all them birds all together, they're all in a range. And I can go back in and change each one. I can double click on this one. You know, and then I could change it, you know, to a cock and then hit save. Now I've changed that one, you know, and I could change a color um, in each one of them. But that's that's a quick way that I always use to add birds under the registration field, because most of them are bird flyers, you know, and they're are all from the same club unless they went out and bought some birds, you know. So um, during young bird season, when they're all 23s, I usually do this in here and then after they're all created. I go back up to the data transfer field to the other tab, you know, then I'll go out and read out his clock over here, plug it in so that it shows up over here. And then I'll go back under that flyer's name under here. Now see all these birds here that I just added now, ironically pop up on the top. Sometimes they could be randomly all over here, you know, um, up here and then some other birds all over. So, um, you may have to, you know, click, click, you know, and move the bar down and over here to, to get down farther on all the birds. But after I read out the clock, these birds that I just created, of course, won't be over here because they're not in the clock yet. Um, if I was to click, you know, this double arrow to send them from this side over to this side, they'd be there. And then they wouldn't have any chip associated with them. And then you won't be able to chip them because they'll be over there. Then you'll have to do a bunch of stuff. So I always recommend that you create all your birds first in the registration, or you could create them here too. You know, if I come over here, you know, I can still create a bird in here too, you know, and come in here and go MRP, you know, still create one in here, you know, and wherever we left off, let's just say 20, um, you know, create it in here too and hit add. Um, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I, I still had sequence checked. Um, then hit add. Okay, now that bird got added right here. Okay, then what I do, like I said, I just go back, make sure the clock is plugged in, you know, I'm, you know, re, you know, like I read it out before. Then I'll just come up here and I always... When I buy all of our chips, you know, we get it from Seagull here in, in the United States. You know, they're located, I think, down in Louisiana. Order them all down there. Get the Pro Series 1. Clip on their chips. They make another time, too, that slide into the band numbers, which are smaller ones, you know. Um, I put them all in little coin one envelopes there. And I usually do that, you know, after I get, there are usually 100 of them in a bag. I put them all in these little envelopes and you know, over the weekend before, you know, I'm bored, you know, I'll put them all in there, all hundred of them in a coin, staple them shut and then put them in like a little plastic tote, you know, so they're all ready to go because you can, you can actually chip, um, put the chip to the bird inside the envelope, you know, so you can go along a lot quicker. So then what I'll do is after the birds are all over here, you know, I'll go down here and then because I don't have a clock plugged in, now this field right here that's blank, there's nothing there, you'll see a chip on it, a green chip. That means to put a chip 
you know, to, to, eat, to this bird, okay? And if you see when I'm clicking on it, it kind of shows up, but it goes away, you know, as I do each one. I'll click on here and click on it, and then the light comes on, the M1, or the club system. I take the envelope with the chip in it, wave it through like I'm basking a bird, and you'll see all of a sudden right here, the chip number comes in this field right here, where it says chip number, and then I write that um, band or the bird number 10 on that envelope. So then when the flyer gets to the loft, you know, he can find, grab that bird 10, rip the envelope, put the chip, and put it on that bird, okay? Then, then actually, if since they're all in a row here, I can just hit enter on my, on my keyboard, and the light comes on. I wave the next one over here. I chip that one, write it on, enter, write that on, next one. I can do them all. And as you're chipping them, this is, this is really cool, as you're chipping them, they will automatically go into the clock over here, okay? So that's why it's important when they're over here on the left side on the PC base and not in the clock that you don't accidentally, you know, send the data over here with no chip associated to the bird or you won't be able to send it over. So this automatically, when you're chipping them, puts them in the clock with a chip on it. So it's really cool. Then when I'm all done and all these have chips on them, then I usually finish it off, you know, make sure I double hit the double arrow, make sure they're all over there. And then I hit the bottom one here and make sure everything there is saved over there. So, you know, when you're done, you'll have 55 birds on this side and 55 birds on this side. So you know that if something ever happens to the clock, you have them saved in your computer. So anyway, that's that's how I do that. Hopefully this has been helpful on that one. Now, the other question I know, I never use schedule a transfer. I never use that at all. I've never used race administration. I've never used that at all. But I do use the evaluation tab at all. And how that works is what I'm going to just kind of walk through it. I ain't going to be able to show you a lot of it. But um, what I do is um, I'm on my laptop now, which is what I um, upload and stuff to eWinSpeed. I, you know. And the other um, desktop that I have is the one that I plug in my Club One system to. And, you know, it's just kind of for that. So um, that's on another table just in my other room. So after I um, get done with a race, um, I will come on to my, come into Pydex here. Go to the evaluation tab and I actually put like a flash drive into my other computer and on the flash drive I always make sure there's a folder on there called Addis um, and when you when you have a folder on like a flash drive on your computer now I have a flash drive plugged into mine right here if I open it up um, on my USB drive here if I open it up, see, I don't have a um, a folder over here called Addis, but if I could add one over here, hit an, a folder, and just make sure it says Addis, okay? And then, okay, so that's saved on my flash drive over on my other computer. So then after I, I you know, um, finish a race, the, the guys, will, they actually bring their clocks to us when a race is over. So then what I do is, you know, I'll go and hook it up to the Club One system, run the red badge over it, which is the evaluation key. That ends the race in the clock, you know, and I print out a copy of, let's say there's two races in there. I print it out. Then I'll um, go ahead on the um, clock and then arrow down on it where it'll say, PC communicate or um, um, mostly that that's I think what it says is PC communicate and then when I do I'll come over here under the evaluate and read out the clock the screen here like it's almost the same thing that's under data transfer it's the same one you're reading out the clock when it's done all of the birds will show up over here then you'll be able to click this tab which is grayed out um, 
and for for most people now that win 95 one i don't think you'd use but you'd use the xp 2000 one then when all of the birds show up here after you read it out you click this button here it's grayed out now then you'll be able to save that to the folder that's called Addis that's on your flash drive or to your desktop that's got you know um if it's if you're using the same computer that's got pydex on you know then you don't need to do it but i i put it on the flash drive and bring it over to my laptop and i do all the uploads on another computer but you could do it right from there if you're connected to an internet you know and you're doing e wind speed and you know you could do it there so i mean that's kind of what i do and um I'll save it in there, and so we have four flyers, and then when I go on the flash drive, you know, I'll see all four files on there, and then I'm able to import it into eWindSpeed, um, which I can show another time um, when I get done with this one. Um, this is the first time, like I said, I made a video in a while because um, I got bored, and, <laughs> and I thought I would I would make some videos, and I'm kind of rambling now, but... Um, I'll try to go back and you know make some more detailed ones and do a better job at and stuff like that so hopefully this has been helpful and um if anybody's got any questions you can feel free to e or email me because my email's on here so other than that you guys have a good day